basketball. It took political pressure to get these two teams back together again, and that was just a few years ago. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brett Musburger. I didn't think this rivalry could get any hotter. And then a few days ago, Kentucky coach Eddie Sutton says, I don't care if Louisville won the championship. We are clearly number one in this state. A few moments ago, Eddie Sutton passed by Denny Crum, the Louisville coach. They did not stop and exchange pleasantries. There was a quick handshake, and then Sutton moved to the Kentucky bench. So that sets our stage, and Billy Packer, what about Kentucky? What about their strategy for this game? Well, I think it's pretty clear, Brent. We have two entirely different type of ball clubs here. In Kentucky, we've got a great perimeter game, super guards, a lot of quickness in the backcourt. They are really suspect inside, however. How about the home team, the Cardinals of Louisville? Reverse it. They're trying to figure out how to get the ball over half court. They've got the great inside game with Ellison leading the way. Their real problem is how do we get the offense generated? Well, you know, man, we could trade some players here this afternoon. Well, if you could trade from these two teams, you've got two top five clubs ready to go to the final four. All right, sit back and enjoy. This is going to be a good one. The Louisville Cardinals against the Kentucky Wildcats. CBS Sports presents NCAA Basketball. And Freedom Hall, the Cardinals of Louisville, the home team, and James Brown. How about Kentucky? Do we have any of their rooters here today? Brent, believe it or not, we do. As you two guys know, this game in the state of Kentucky is considered the dream series. But nowhere is the word fair mentioned. As a matter of fact, in this building, the home site of Louisville, which seats over 18,000 people, they only allotted the Kentucky followers 100 tickets. The largest cluster happens to be sitting behind me. They know they'll be drowned out, but they're hoping that their Wildcats will do the loudest talking on the basketball floor. Brent? All right, James, that's 100 more than they wanted to give them. Let's meet <laughs> Eddie Sutton's starting lineup. There'll be two players up front, Irving Thomas and Rob Locke. Then he will go with three guards in the backcourt. Blackman, of course, James Blackman, you're familiar with him, along with Ed Davender. The impact freshman is Rex Chapman. He could be a great one before his collegiate career is over. Now, for the defending national champions who have been struggling because Denny Crum has to replace three of those familiar faces. So up front, Kenny Payne will get a start here this afternoon. Herbert Crook, he was a starter. And, of course, the MVP for the championship victory over Duke, that is Curtis Ellison. The guards, the men who will be under the microscope. Craig Holly, the freshman, and Tony Kimbrough, who is 6'7", a natural forward, but they would like to get some shooting ability in that tall guard that Denny Crum has always featured here at Louisville. And so, Mr. Packer, here we go, and we've got a championship atmosphere. I think the fans can tell right off the bat whether the matchup problem for Kentucky in size is going to be hard to overcome. The battle for it, and Ellison comes up with it. Louisville controls the opening tap. Ali, the freshman, his father played here for the Cardinals. Kimbrough with the game's first shot. Loose underneath. Ellison up with it, and he misses. It'll go to Kentucky. Do you notice the battle underneath the glass and how jittery the players are? They feel it. There's a lot of pressure on these young men. We see the backcourt press being exerted by Louisville. They knock the ball away, and here comes the freshman Chapman. Any team that likes to press doesn't like to be pressed. So you can see Louisville, even though they've given up some quickness, going right after Kentucky. Eddie Sutton is going to substitute immediately. He will bring Madison in the game and force a different matchup because of the defense being employed. Kentucky gets it back. Davender has it rejected by Ellison. Ellison had seven blocks in a game this year. Bad pass by Crook. Threw it behind Purvis. And there we see our first substitute checking into the game, Richard Madison. Now he is 6'7", and Thomas sits down. And you can see another sub coming in for Eddie Sutton very quickly. Kind of unusual. You can see a completely spread out offense. Nobody in the post trying to give the guards room to operate. A lot comes out high for the Wildcats. Madison. Short, rebounded by Crook, and Kentucky hit it out of bounds. It'll be Louisville's ball. There's the second substitute checking in, and that's number four, Derek Miller. He is the freshman from Savannah. 
for the Wildcats. He's 6'6", so what about this lineup and why these changes? I think the changes are on the defensive end of the court. Eddie Sutton might not have liked the matchup he had, but he's got to come back with Davenant. Oh, he squeezes the trigger on his first shot, and if he gets it going, he'll light it up here. He's a great pure shooter. Brett, there is a big, big difference in size to the point here where it's hard to believe that Kentucky can ever match up in this game. Louisville just so much bigger and stronger. And Sutton will call a timeout and bring the Wildcats over. The Louisville fans are confident, but they're only up by a field goal. in Dallas, Louisville matched against Duke for the national championship. Milt Wagner of the Cardinals had the big free throws. Oh, it's a free throw for the national championship. Louisville will win it. The Cardinals have won the national championship. A year later, and Milt Wagner has been cut by the Dallas Mavericks. He's now in the CBA, and his coach, Denny Crum, says that in three years, Milt Wagner never missed a big free throw, and Denny says give him the right system, and he'll play for 10 years in the NBA. Embro coming around. Louisville is really psyched up. In my mind, Eddie Sutton's got to think about going zone. Louisville's playing right over the top of Kentucky now. Chapman, off a fake pass, spins. That's the first sight of Chapman for most people in the national audience. He's a tremendous leaper. Has that ability to go inside or out. Good three-point shooter. Holly trapped down in the corner. Gets Ellison, who whips it back to Kimbrough, and Payne has it knocked away by Blackman, who steals it. That's a super pass by Purvis Ellison to come back outside. The Wildcats light up that perimeter game as Ed Davender hits his first field goal. Interesting, up to this point, Davender and Blackman, the two outstanding guards for Kentucky, are only two of 14 from the three-point line. Holly gets in low. As a result of that three-pointer, it was 5-4, and then Holly regains the lead for Louisville. Louisville still picking up full court. The tough matchup is Crook's matchup on Blackman, but Blackman hasn't proved he's a big scorer. Downtown! Two in a row from the bomb squad. Hey, when a freshman can go to Indiana and Bloomington and play against Bobby Knight the first time and get 26, you know he's ready. Mr. Basketball in the state of Kentucky last year. Another turnover by Louisville. That's three here in the early minutes of this game as a result of those two three-pointers against Crum, who hates the three-point shot, by the way. Kentucky leads Louisville, 8-6. Brent, you know, I think sometimes a coach who talks about the three-point shot as a negative maybe takes away from his club. Louisville's only three for 17 on the year in the three-point line. Not a good stat at all. Davender coming around Chapman. Notice Louisville switching on every occasion. If you have good experience guards, you can afford to be patient. Something Louisville does not have. Into Locke, who got in behind the defense, and Payne reached in, but he traveled. Pretty hard to lob against Louisville with their terrific leapers. Asking Hawley to do an awful lot, too, as a freshman. Came in without big stats as a high school player, just a good team player. Not getting the ball inside yet. And away from the ball, there was a foul. Goes against Blackman. Well, Brent, we talk about matchup problems. On one end, you had Crook picking up Blackman, but down on the other end of the court means Blackman's got to pick up one of the forwards. In this particular case, he's picking up Payne. Not as big a scorer as Crook, but still a tough matchup. Holly takes the pass from Crook. And they get inside to Ellison, who's not yet on the scoreboard. Kimbrough's jumper. That size advantage, he is two of three. Kimbrough really taking it to the hoop, too. Another former 
Mr. Kentucky basketball. Cook going with Chapman. Well, they get caught in switches sometimes, and Chapman going to try to take him back door. A good defense by Cook, but he can't handle him. Chapman glides in and drew the foul. He was Emmer on the left side of his head. One of the reasons Denny Crum has always, always been able to go ahead and have switches is because his guards are big in size and they never get off, they never get off bounds. But here you're going to see that Chapman just a little bit too quick for, for Crook goes inside, gets hit on the side of the head and goes to the line. Real difficult kid to match up against. Leap so well has got the good size. That's the first foul on Payne and another substitute, Thomas returning. Freddie Sutton. He started and played about 20 seconds. Chapman, a 66% free throw shooter, will get better as the year goes on. Surprisingly, Kentucky as a team, very poor from the free throw line so far this year, only shooting 51%. Chapman was shaken up by that blow. You could see him at the free throw line. He was still trying to clear his ear on that left side. Crook is being half fronted. Thomas staying outside with him. With a want to go inside to Purvis Ellison. They can't get him open yet. Crook. And there was a foul. And that's the first on Chapman. And Sutton telling the young man something over on the Kentucky sideline. But he is bothered. I think you can even see that that left ear is red from the blow he took. No question he was shaken up by that. Brent, remember the last time we saw him play? Right here in Louisville. High school game. Remember we went to see him last year? He got 44. We were impressed. <laughs> His dad, the high school coach, I mean the college coach at Kentucky Wesleyan. And anytime you see these sons of coaches, they seem to be way ahead of their time. Cook's free throws put the Cardinals ahead. And that familiar full court pressure, but they must work against very talented guards here this afternoon. They're not looking for the steal. Blackman, and it's another three pointer. That's three of three from the three point range by the Wildcats. And Payne's going to come out of there for defensive purposes. Abram coming in for him. And the turnover it was a bad play. Ellison had stepped away. Gavinder at the other end for the Wildcats. Holly made two mistakes. One, the bad pass. Then he didn't get back on defense. Kentucky's experience in the backcourt really taking over now. As we said, a game of contrast. Louisville can't get inside where they have superiority. Kentucky doing a good job full court. And checking in is Mike Abram. He's a 6'4 swing man who can play both guard and forward. He'll play some forward against Eddie Sutton's Wildcats as Payne sits back down. But the key, Brent, is, is getting Ellison to handle the ball inside. Well, Locke working away at Purvis, it who still shot. can't get on the scoreboard. Ellison is scoreless here in the first half. Kentucky leading it 14 to 10. And again, spreading out the defense. Nobody in the low post. Taking their time. And Sutton continues to shuttle his players in and out. Derek Miller back in off the bench. He's working with Thomas. Davender with the ball. Blackman. Chapman will take a break. And Blackman was fouled. Herbert Crook made a move to cut him off, and that's his first personal. Brent, even with the 45-second shot clock of a team that'll be patient. There's no doubt now with the ice pack up to the left side of Chapman's head that the injury he suffered before he went to the free throw line was fairly severe, as I thought, because of his reaction when he came on through after the basket. And then the way he behaved at the free throw line, there was some difficulty in clearing that ear. And here come those free throw shooting problems again. Isn't it amazing that a team that can light up the scoreboard from the three-point range can struggle the way the Wildcats do at the free throw line? 
Black will shoot under 50% from the foul line. Doesn't make any sense. He should back up four feet and shoot his free throws. <laughs> Williams in the ball game now, trying to get that ball inside. This is a big problem for Denny Crump. <laughs> this is Keith Williams, three, and here's Ellison. Has it knocked away? Davender reach in. Louisville comes back at the other end. That's a four-point turnaround. Great save by Kimbrough, because Kentucky had a three-on-0 going the other way. Foul is on Thomas. And that is the fourth team foul on Kentucky. 13-19, and Chapman checks back into the game for Coach Sutton. The last time when Ellison had that ball is the first time today that he's been able to get the ball down a low enough post. So far, Locke has been doing a pretty good job shoving him out. Kentucky in the zone. 2-1-2 two, two with Locke in the center. Both coaches employing a lot of players early on in this emotional contest between these two schools. And from outside, hitting his first field goal is Mike Abram. Here again, it's that 2-2-1. Two, two, Full quarter, nothing. Playing man-to-man -man now. Derek Miller. Hands it off here to Davidon. Or another freshman that's been really impressive so far in early going for Kentucky. Excellent outside shooter. Rattled in and out, and Abram rebounding. Here's Williams. Abram feels it. Missed that time. Almost stole it back. Wound up in the hands of Davidon. Not patient enough to get the ball down inside. Kentucky doing a good job boxing out. Keeping the ball away from that middle, so Locke has to come out to beat it. Gives you plenty of room to drive. Davender pulls up off the drive and was short. Ellison running it down. Ellison. Kentucky controls the rebound. Ellison missed one game this year because of an ankle injury. He was a little gimpy on the ankle yesterday, but he actually pinched that jump shot. Didn't follow through very well. Here again is that spread offense by Kentucky. Locke battling Ellison inside for the layup. It was good body movement by the Kentucky center backing and battling his way in. Reminded you of Rick Robian. Some of those other strong pivot men who played down Mike the road. Phillips. It's amazing how this contrast in styles has changed even as the game started out. Louisville was getting the ball inside, playing over the top of Kentucky. Now Kentucky's spreading the court out, really getting advantage of Louisville. Williams slowing it down on top. Now watch is cut off. Eddie Sutton was right. That was a five-second count. Crook, beautiful move by Ellison and a slick pass by Crook. Trent, first time today that Louisville's been able to be patient enough to get the ball down inside, going over the top of the smaller Kentucky team. And Ellison's first field goal, Billy, as a result. Chapman, oh, score another three-pointer. That was without a dribble. And when you can shoot your jumper from that kind of range without having to coil your body or use the dribble, You've really got a big-time jump shot. Got a good story to tell you about Eddie Sutton and the three-point play. He's maintaining control of this game with it. He's four of five off Ellison's hand. Abram controls on the far side. He was at the right spot, wasn't he? Playing that zone. Kimbrough missing. Lock. Rebounding for the Wildcats. Nice job by Eddie Sutton. He goes to the zone. Louisville does not shoot well from the perimeter. The new rule has been the difference in this game so far. Otherwise, if they had to play without the three-pointer, Kentucky would be in serious trouble because of the size disadvantage. Something for the critics to keep in mind. You notice how Kentucky sets up outside the three-point line. Nice back cut. Chapman, and that's 11 points for the freshman here this afternoon in the first half. He's as good as advertised, folks. And he hasn't forced the thing. Crook. Banging away 
Murray for the champions. His second field goal. Both teams hitting better than 50% here this afternoon. But one shooting behind that line. It's a big difference. And a five-point lead as a result. 21-16, the Wildcats over the Cardinals. If they're going to hit them out there, you've got to shoot 70% to catch them from inside. Kentucky also is so patient. They know that 45 seconds is a long time, and Coach Sutton signaling them to spread it out a little bit, bring the shot clock down. It's now at 10 seconds. Davender. And Ellison yanks it away for Louisville. They're four of six from that three-point range at this moment after that miss. Kimbrough. That's technical and foul. Right up on the technical. rim. Yep. And the technical will be called. Louisville just not patient enough to get the ball inside easily. Now you see McSwain goes up, takes a bad shot, and there grasping the rim. No question about the call by Herbert Crook. Ellison sits down alongside Payne. This is such a different team from the squad that won the national championship. They lost senior leadership and talent. Billy Thompson, Milt Wagner, Jeff Hall, all gone. And Denny Crum must rebuild the Cardinals. Now, Brent, that's 51% of their scoring, 35% of their rebounds, and 60% of their assists with those three players. And again, a problem at the free throw line as Davender misses the technical. Kentucky is one of five from the free throw line. They're four of six with the three pointers. We'll be right back. 8.17 to go in the first half. I'm Brent Musburger along with Billy Packer. And Billy, what about an overview of what we're watching? Well, I believe, Brent, when the game started, it looked like Louisville really had the advantage. We're going to see a play right here where Hawley's going to take it down the corner. He's not patient enough to let Purvis Ellison, who's matched up with a smaller man, get position. He throws it away, and then he complicates his mistake by not getting back on defense, allowing Kentucky to get an easy three-on-one fast break. So the problems continue in the backcourt, not no having question. that leadership and that experience, which is so critical for a team. And you're matched up against a squad that has two veteran guards plus a standout freshman who was a coach's son who sat there at the dining table for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and heard talk about basketball and knows how the game should be played. And that's the young man with the ball right now, Rex Chapman. Brent, shocking. Louisville comes out with a 1-2-2 zone. Now, Eddie Sutton's going to pull things out here. Louisville very seldom goes to his own defense. With Ellison out. Now look for Rex Chapman to get a position where he can shoot right over the top of this zone. Felton Spencer, the seven-foot center, has checked in too. As yes, Miller, Miller bangs over the top with a three-pointer. Boy, that, that is so difficult to handle with a zone when you've got Davender, Chapman and Miller, all of which can surround that zone and hit the three-pointer. And Madison's a good three-point shooter also. The Williams is out there with Abram, Spencer, Crook, the lone starter, missing that shot, and lock off with the rebound. And the lack of good shot selection by Louisville's taking away the advantage they would have on the boards. They stay in the zone. Lock facing the basket. Gets it inside to Madison. Miller has it taken away by Crook. Mark McSwain also on the floor for Denny Crum. Kentucky in their zone. It'll be Crook. And underneath, but the Cardinals still can't convert after the offensive rebound, and now it's a third try. It's 24-16. Kentucky... Firing away from the outside here. Abram. So Abram with his second field goal. Out of four from the field. Hounding Davender. And too closely. Foul is on Abram. He got him with the body. Excellent job by Davender to let the defense commit and then just go right on by. 
You know, Denny Crum's got a real problem, not only for this game, but where is he going to get this leadership, Brent? Well, he will continue to probe, and we'll return. A lot of surprises during the holiday season, and here are three as offered up by the Kansas basketball coach, Larry Brown. Hi, I'm Larry Brown, coach with Kansas University, and the three biggest surprises this season is one, that the um, three-point rule was voted in, two, that the three-point rule is still in, and three, that I'm still the coach of the University of Kansas. <laughs> Tongue-in-cheek, huh? That might not be a surprise next year, too. If, uh, if he's still there, it'll surprise me the way the conversation has gone lately. But I'll tell you who's delighted with the three-point rule right now is Eddie Sutton. Thank you. He has a lead because of it. Now, I ran into him at an airport this summer. He was coming back from an all-star game in Japan where they used the three-point rule during the trip. And he said to me, Brent, it is going to change the game more drastically than anybody realizes, and I'm going to design my offense with that in mind. And I'm watching it here this afternoon, and he's making excellent use of the rule, Billy. Well, he is. He has the personnel for it. There's Chapman from down. Hanging down. one in. There's on no, cue. Those are not short three-pointers. That's an NBA three-point shot by Chapman. That zone may go away. They are six of eight from the three-point range. And the freshman, Chapman, is leading the way. Here's another freshman, Spencer, and he has it picked. Oh, and a great pass. They missed the layup. Madison comes away for the Wildcats, stolen by Abram, and he is fouled. Miller reaching back in, fouled him. His first personal of the game. Now, Chapman's pass didn't end up into a basket, but that was beautifully conceived. You're going to watch a bounce pass. You're going to thread it right through off the dribble with the left hand. Perfect pass. I don't want to jinx the young man, but the night I saw him in that high school game and what I've heard of him so far in the 26 he laid on Bobby Knight, and I'll tell you, folks, he's one of the closest things to a young Jerry West I've seen come along, and that's putting some heavy stuff on a freshman. Boy, he's good. Payne missing, and Madison wraps it up. I've never seen a Louisville team this confused. They just aren't in sync at all in terms of what they're trying to accomplish out here. Davender positioning the attack, and Ellison will return. Now, you notice they position themselves against the zone outside the three-point line, whereas Louisville tries to get in it. That, a little bit that too was a far little bit out. too far out. Contact underneath. Eddie Sutton's going to talk to Chapman right away. Don't try to win it all in one shot. As Ellison returns, Sutton with his arm around Chapman at the Kentucky bench. Now Chapman returns. He understands. Two fouls on Thomas. There was contact underneath. While we are talking about Chapman, we should not overlook that there is another big name freshman who had been out there, Felton Spencer. He sits down now, and it is stolen, and here comes Chapman. He's a dunker. Oh, holds it in. He had the dunk taken away from him. And he, he was beaten one time in high school competition in dunking contests. That was in the McDonald's All-American game. He can really get in the air. Payne from the corner. Ellison underneath missed it, and Abram with a good offensive rebound got to the glass. The problem there was Miller no blocking out on the weak side, and Eddie Sutton letting that freshman know about it. This is an extremely young team both on both sides out here right now. Great intensity so far in this for a regular season game. But it's the battle for bragging rights to the state of Kentucky. And here, folks, that's big, real big. It's only one senior on the floor. McSwain. Now notice how they surround the zone. They're a couple of steps back from that three-point line. And they're back in the man-to-man -man now. And they try to spread out that defense. Payne can't handle Davenant. Miller, three-pointer. Oh, this is phenomenal. This is seven of nine, and Kentucky, as a result, builds a 32-20 lead, and Louisville has attempted only one three-pointer. Only 17 on the year. Last night, Steve Alford from Indiana was eight for 11 from out there. They miss a three-pointer there from the outside. And Mark McSwain reaching back in for the Cardinals. It's 32-20. 3.16 to go first half. 
Well, James Brown is joining us here this afternoon in Louisville. He'll be along at the half. And, James, what have you got in store for us? All right, Brent, thank you very much. Coming up for you at halftime on the College Basketball Report, I'll bring you up to date on some other college basketball games around the country. We'll also get a report from Irv Cross on tomorrow's NFC wildcard game between Washington and Los Angeles. And we'll also hear from Rex Chapman on his transition from high school to college, and it does seem to be difficult, as well as Kentucky's biggest fan. That and more coming up for you at halftime on the College Basketball Report. All Brent? right, James, talking about young Chapman out of Owensboro, Kentucky. He played at Apollo High, and you know what the coach is calling the team this year without him? The young and the reckless. <laughs> He has scored 16 points. That's four shy of the entire Louisville team here this afternoon. Again, Kentucky operating completely outside the three-point line, regardless if it's man-to-man -man or zone offense. So it really spreads Louisville out. Chapman, Chapman. hits Chapman off the fake, stepped inside, missed the shot, rebounded Holly for the Cardinals. Ellison is one of five, and Cook is short. Kentucky's ball. Chapman's on the right. Gets it Pass right back. back to Davender. Didn't even put it on the floor. Is that Miller on the tap, or was it Davender? Both quick leapers. Purvis Ellison went for the block and didn't get a rebounding position. Louisville really lacking confidence here. From outside, Tony Kimbrough. Again, Brent, a two-point shot. And normally, if you're going to be another foot away, you might as well get back for three. Madison. Good athlete. Best athlete on the Kentucky team. Great high school baseball pitcher, one of the top football players in the state, and, of course, one of the, and the top basketball player in the state coming out of high school. In deep to Ellison. That's where Purvis wants the ball. His second field goal, total of four points. You notice how Kentucky has taken the crowd out of the game. Now they're trying to get back into it on that one shot. Louisville was beaten at Freedom Hall this year by DePaul. Kentucky's lone loss on the road at Indiana. Crook couldn't get it. But now Ellison picking him up. Try to go back into Purvis Ellison if they're smart. Crook drew the foul from Chapman. Tomorrow on CBS Sports Sunday, the year in review. Now, I know there's another AFC wildcard game. You want to set your VCR because there's some great highlights from that particular show, and you can enjoy it at any time. So you might want to record a little bit, and then, of course, you'll be with us live. 3.30 Eastern time, the CBS Sports will bring you the NFC wildcard game. Our coverage beginning with the NFL today. Here, Rex Chapman is leading the Kentucky Wildcats. Herbert Cook hits a free throw, and that cuts Kentucky's lead to 36-25, 11 points. We are inside of a minute in the first half, and uh, Billy, it's been quite a show by Eddie Sutton's team. Well, it really has been a good show, not only from the standpoint of the way the players are executing, but Eddie Sutton really has a game plan down there. Five and one coming in this game. They were picked to be fifth in the SEC the start of this year. With this kind of guard play, though, they'll be in every ball game. Crowd wanted traveling on that fake by Chapman, who comes inside. He was going to dunk it by Ellison. He was going to dunk over it. Madison took him on, and the foul is on Madison. You can block a dunk, obviously, but Chapman was going to take this one all the way to the hoop. He was up high enough to dunk it. Had it not been for Purvis Ellison's incredible shot blocking ability, he would have stuffed that one. Watch the freshman again from Owensboro, and Ellison with his second block of the game. Purvis blocks more shots he did last year and has so far this year personally than the opponents block as a team against Louisville. Kimbrough at the free throw line. He's a sophomore out of Louisville. Seneca High School. That's the same high school which produced one Wes Unso. And Eddie Sutton, about the only thing he's going to have to do with Chapman is to get him to calm down a little bit and not try to make that big play all the time. 
That was some drive. Got it back down to eight. They have to watch out for the three-point play right here. Let's see if that block lifts this Louisville team. Good double team to opportunity. Chapman gets it into the hands of Davender. Davender spreads the floor. We have to be careful of the five-second count here. There are no hash marks anymore in college basketball. Last five seconds. That should be a five-second count. Chapman over Holly. What a great one-on-one -on -one move by the freshman. They took him to school on that move. This is as good a show as we've seen from a freshman basketball player, particularly considering this game. Now, let's see if he's got him for five. Some shot. Just has great leaping ability. He winds up seven of ten and a total of 18 points. And the Kentucky Wildcats lead it by ten here at the half. We'll return to Freedom Hall after this message and a word from your local station. the past several years, college basketball has changed in that freshman players have had a tremendous impact on the game itself. Now, many first-year players have had some difficulty in making the transition from high school to big-time college basketball. But in the case of Kentucky's Rex Chapman, as you've seen, the transition is about as smooth as anyone could have hoped for. Blackman looking. Chapman, yes! Three points! Chapman has 24! Holy Toledo, what a freshman! When you think of big-time college basketball, you usually think of words like glamour, excitement, crowds, and the like. But what may not come immediately to mind is the pressure on the young men who play the game, especially the freshmen. And if you happen to be an instant success like Kentucky's Rex Chapman, making the switch from high school to college can involve some major adjustments. I think there's a big adjustment there. Uh, college, you have to adjust not only uh, on the court, you have to adjust off the floor as well. Socially, you know, it's a first time away from mom and dad. And when you're 18 years old, well, that's a big adjustment. Well, Academically, it really doesn't have an effect on me because, um, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm the kind of person where I'm going to do my work and make sure my, my work's in on time and uh, try and do it the best I can. But uh, socially, it's, it's pretty hard because uh, not everybody's going to like you when you're, um, you know, in the spotlight all the time. They're going to try and find flaws in your personality, and uh, it's just hard. Rex, the biggest adjustment on the basketball court would be what? I say practice. Um, high school, you, you go out and you might practice one or two times really hard a week. In college, you had to come out and play hard every day because there's somebody out there to challenge you every day. Each year, you learn something different. So I think that's the only, the only problem he's going to have is next year, he's going he's gonna to think next year that he, he's over the hump, but then he's going to come a time where his sophomore and junior, he's going to keep finding more things that he has to conquer. So it, it's going to be a real experience for him his whole four years here. Instant success has placed one unforeseen demand on Rex. Limited free time. I get a lot of mail. You know, at first I just, I, kept, I keep everything, but I just keep it in my uh, closet in the room. And then one day, come the coaches saw me, they, they saw that I had a lot of mail. And uh, they told me to start answering it. So uh, about two weeks ago, for about uh, four or five hours, I was in my room answering fan mail. I answered every one of them. Indicative of Rex's smooth transition to the college game are his 18 first-half points, which lead all scores. Every school in America has its legion of loyal followers, and you and I both, both know that there's some real diehards out there. But to be recognized as one of Kentucky's most loyal fans, especially in a state where basketball is virtually a religion now, that's something really special. Well, we've located the man who is indeed Kentucky's biggest fan. Meet Steve Raritan, 72 years old and Kentucky's most loyal fan. Steve says it's been a long time since he missed a Kentucky basketball game. New Year's Eve in 1968, we played uh, Wisconsin in Chicago, and my wife and I had, I guess you'd call it a New Year's party, 
and uh, you have to stay home sometime. <laughs> of course, Coach Rupp was coaching back there, and, and we got beat. <laughs> he come back, he said, you didn't miss a damn thing. He said, we played as cold as the weather. <laughs> and there he is, Steve Raritan, taking in his 544th consecutive Wildcat game. You know, I had an opportunity to talk with Steve before the game, and he said his wife of 45 years never attends a home or away basketball game with him. And for you basketball junkies, perhaps that's the secret for a successful marriage. Well, we think we have a successful partnership in Brent Musburger and Billy Packer, and they're set to call the second half of today's game between Louisville and Kentucky, and they'll do that right after this message and a word from your local station. Enjoy the game. Freedom Hall, Billy, we got some shooting display going on here from long range. Well, we really do. 7 to 10 from the three-point line. 21 to nothing is the score from the three-point area. There's no way to recover from that. That is better than 50% of the Kentucky Wildcats points coming via three-pointers. Now, I had an opportunity to talk to Denny Crum about the rule, and I asked him what he thought about it. If you score a 60-yard touchdown pass, you don't get 9 or 10 or 12 points for it. If you hit a home run in baseball because it happens to be a further hit, you don't get two runs for it. In basketball, because you're two inches out further or one inch further than 19 foot 9, now you get three points instead of two. And to me, that just cheapens the game. I just don't like it. But he has to live with it. Exactly right. Maury Arnold, outstanding coach at Western Kentucky, is very much against the three-point line, but he played Vegas. Up at the NIT, it opened up the season. Vegas comes back from 19 down with a three-point play. Whether you like it or not, it is part of the game this year, and you've got to learn how to play behind that line. So I Denny Crum will be trailing Eddie Sutton and the Kentucky Wildcats by 10 points as we start the second half of the battle for the bragging rights to Kentucky. Now, this is the last year of the current contract, but I spoke to Kentucky Athletic Director Cliff Hagan. He says the contract's in the mail. For the next four years. <laughs> you, you know, I love you. You see these guys put out their, their uh, propaganda. Kentucky says that they have the number one 58 years without a losing season. Louisville says they're number one because they have 42 years of winning seasons. Kentucky did have one that was a 500 season in there. They, they play <laughs> games with each other on every point and every issue. Chapman missing from the three-point range. Madison inside, muscling in two for the Wildcats. And that, of course, the big question about Sutton's Wildcats, can they get some offensive rebounds? Well, two outstanding plays. One by Locke in the first half, a good power move inside. Madison here with a good power move. Here's a kid coming out of high school that I saw a play, and I said, destined for stardom. Can't miss outstanding collegiate player. And he really hasn't shown it yet, but he certainly has the ability to, to do so. You know, the two three-point lines on the floor here are probably somewhat confusing. I just happen to think about that. The lighter line further back is the NBA three-point line. The one that is the closest to the basket at 19-9, that's the college distance. So Holly, if he had shot there, it would have been a three-pointer. This is Allison inside. I can assure you Denny Crum at halftime said we're going inside to Purvis Ellison. On the far side bringing it down is Chapman 7 of 11 in the first half. Good cut. Higginsman can... didn't follow through brought it back out. And Louisville coming in this game four and five dropping three in a row up there in Alaska is not a confident team. It's an extremely young club. Good cut. Davinder. Ellison's third block of the game. Smart move by Ellison. No, he controlled the block instead of tapping it away. Not a good shot. Holly was out of control. Chapman has Blackman on the other side. Contact underneath. The lock coming over the back, huh? Lock went sprawling to the floor. His first personal. Blackman showed some leaping ability going up on that pass. Eddie Sutton, again, there's Chapman with his tremendous physical abilities throwing that ball, but really not a wise pass to make. You're up 41-28. Cut that ball down to the center of the court. Try to get an easy fast break opportunity. Kimbrough off the double team. Locke pulling down the rebound for the Wildcats, muscling his way out. Davender has played extremely well here for Kentucky. He has not shot 
that well from the field, but he runs this team extremely well, and he's contributed some big rebounds in this game. And watch the open offense. Nobody in the low post, so everything is wide open. Chapman bangs a three-pointer in. That's their eighth. Eight of 11, 21 for the freshman. Abram just put his head down. He's trying to match up with him, and Chapman just so cool going right by him. Ellison comes out to the high post. Abram crossed to Holly. Inside to Crook. And a foul underneath. Well, near the conclusion of this game, Billy and I will select Chevrolet, most valuable player from each team. And Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. I wonder what the record is for Chevrolet scholarship money. Let's see. Rex Chapman will be around four years. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be on TV a few times. I would think so, especially as you told me that Eddie Sutton had a good recruiting class coming in next year. It's considered. Now, I don't like to talk about freshman recruits until I get this chance to see them play. But on paper, they are listed as the best in the country. One interesting one is Leron Ellis, who's Leroy Ellis's son from the West Coast. Crook missing his free throws. It's 44-28, Kentucky's biggest lead of the afternoon at the 17-27 mark. This is an impressive-looking Wildcat team. And remember, there without Kenny Walker, he left. Now with the New York Knicks, Winston Bennett was hurt. He lost that midair. Lost it. Madison will come down inside. And he was fouled. Reaching in on him was Kimbrough that time from behind. That's Kimbrough's first personal of the game. Now, Brent, one of the things we're seeing out here also is Kentucky's superiority on the boards. Now, Chapman lost that ball, was able to keep it going. Why Kentucky is rebounding so well is they have the court so spread out that Louisville can't beat them to the basket. So not only are they beating them with a three-point play, they're actually keeping right up with them on the boards. Knocked away, and Madison controls, and he has it stripped. Abram trying to save it, went out of bounds, Kentucky's ball. Speaking of Winston Bennett, he underwent that major knee operation. He is seated near the end of the Kentucky bench watching this game. He was the big man in the Wildcats victory in Lexington, which we covered a year ago. Considered uh, All-American Timber for this year. Madison's jump pass winds Good up luck. a field goal. And there's Winston sharing Nothing. on two more by the Cats. Nothing going wrong for Kentucky. They're the first team I've seen this year, however, that has their offense structured strictly for the three-point play as far as the way they operate outside the line. Now, Eddie Sutton gave him a lot of credit. He realized the kind of impact, and rather than changing it, he altered his offensive strategy to take advantage of it. He was sending a player <laughs> into the sideline. Did you see him? ran right into one of the assistant coach's forearms as he came down there. Now watch him, Brent, how they all are positioned outside the line when they catch the ball, which really spreads the defense. Not a good play by Locke. Now, that's, that's not part of the offense. And Eddie Sutton can't believe it. He's going to talk to Locke on this one. <laughs> Slock, my man. We're not opening up a hole for the fullback here. Now, this is basketball. We've got to at least make it look good. He's pointing up to the stand. Maybe he's saying, now, look, Locke, one more of those, and that's where you're going to be sitting. We won't even let you use the bench. But he's done a good job for him today so far, battling on the boards. Remember two years ago when Eddie was down at Arkansas, and he ended up back up in the – he wasn't on the bench either in the NCAA tournament, went up behind there, talked to Liddell Anderson. Said he wasn't out of the coaching box. We're at Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm Brent Musburger along with Billy Packer. The Wildcats have exploded behind the three-point play here this afternoon. They are 8 of 11 in three-pointers, and they have built the lead as the result. Certainly have. And, you know, the, Louisville came off their last national championship, and, and their club was 2 and 7. This club looked like they could drop to 4 and 6 and have a tough, tough schedule the rest of the way. Freshman Rex Chapman leading the way with 21 points here so far this afternoon. He's number three, being chased by another number three who now releases him, and Ellison is out there with Chapman. He dribbles inside the big man, gets to the basket, missed, but Madison cleans up. Chapman realized he had the big man on him outside, and he said, let's go to work. I got a little quickness here. It's really causing Louisville rebounding problems, too. They're not blocking out on the backside at all. Good hustle by Blackman. 
That's about the third or fourth time in this half Madison's been able to come from the weak side and grab a rebound. Kentucky has outscored Louisville 10-0 in the second half, and they build a 20-point lead over the defending national champions. He's Sutton because he's had his game plan working to perfection. They've gone almost five minutes of this half. The Cardinals of Louisville without a field goal while Kentucky hit those four. And the Wildcats have built the 20-point lead, 48-28. Now they go back into their zone defense, changing at the timeout. Kimbrough. But there you have Brent. Kimbrough takes his jumper, and he's standing inside the line. If he's back another foot, he gets a three-pointer. Picking up the press a little bit. Has not been a factor today. And you would think that these experienced Kentucky guards could bring the ball up against that press. Blackman. Waits for Davender. Look for a backdoor cut here by a player coming up. Louisville trying to overplay those passes. Blackman's three-pointer. And that is number nine from the three-point range by the Wildcats. They're nine of 13. And to give you an idea of the difference, Louisville is 0 for 2 That's from the three-point strike. 7 nothing. There again. Stepping inside the line, Kimbrough missing and yanked away by Madison, who is starting to exert himself at both ends of the glass. And Denny Crum will send Payne back into the game. Fred, you don't think this is going to have an effect on recruiting, the type of players that you want to get to be able to shoot that shot at least one or two a year? Well, my question about that would be, will they keep this distance the same? Inside. That's nine points for Davender this afternoon. And if you're an SEC coach, do you think Kentucky's still going to be fifth place in that league? <laughs> Well, I tell you, I've got to put my zone a little bit further out if I'm going to play it. I've got to go out after and contest it. There was Abram stepping in there and hitting the field goal. But it has been, we talked about a game of contrast that when we started this game, and, and it really has been contrast, but Kentucky has certainly had the decided advantage by playing their outside game, offsetting Louisville's inside game. Well, they get it inside low, and... Thomas got it back out to oh. Blackman. It's another one. 10 of 14 from the three-point line. I would not expect them to shoot this well every day. They're putting on a clinic here. Well, Sutton put the reputation of the school on the line earlier, and they're backing it up here, aren't they? Out of bounds on the turnover. It'll go over. Curtis Ellison very frustrated. Hadn't been able to get untracked all day. Next week, next Sunday, St. John's against Villanova or Indiana against Ohio State for Eastern time. So check local listings for which NCAA basketball game will be your area on CBS. 12-48 here in the second half. Kentucky dominating with the three-pointers and Chapman rattled out. Oh, good steal by Thomas. Sutton over on the far side. You could see him signaling to the team to slow it down, bring it back up, but he's coaching. Wants Chapman over there on the side for a quick word. That saves a timeout. Yeah, he told Blackman to come over and handle the ball so he can have a little discussion. Five seconds. And it goes over. Now this Sorry. year, what this about year the rule, Billy? there are no hash marks in collegiate ball anymore. You can hold the ball for four seconds, dribble for four, and then hold it again for four. But once you start dribbling, the five-second count is on. You've got to get rid of it. Williams was fouled. That's the second on Miller. Williams, the freshman from Louisville. And Miller, his counterpart, is out of Savannah, Georgia. That's the same town which produced Purvis Ellison. Craig Holly returns. He's out of Noblesville, Indiana. His dad. One of the freshmen. This Denny Crum team will be much better in a couple of years, won't it? But Purvis can't get anything going at all. Holly's dad played for Louisville, played with Wade Houston, one of the assistant coaches at Louisville. That's two fouls on Crook. And Ellison is two of eight with four rebounds. And 
the seven foot freshman Felton Spencer returning here for Louisville. And he's taking Purvis Ellison out, so it looks like Denny Crum is saying this one's over. Just want to get it Purvis to settle down. He didn't even talk to him as he walked by. 12.05 to go in Louisville. And a foul before the inbounds pass. That was Miller, and for Miller, his third personal. He ought to be proud of setting the screen. Miller can't weigh more than 145 pounds in a 6'6 frame, so anytime he gets called for blocking, he's got to be proud of it. Big Ten playing well this year, aren't they? And in overtime, SC beats Tennessee. Oh, we get a chance to see Spencer. And watch another freshman, Chapman. Showtime. There's Muhammad Ali, the champion, who's watching a future heavyweight in Rex Chapman. The greatest of all time. Chapman saying, I want to be in that same breath, huh? They have had some, you know, another great player from Owensboro. That's a little freshman enthusiasm right there. Cliff Hagen was from Owensboro, Kentucky. With Ali watching, and that's Jimmy Ellis, who was to Ali's right. He is also from Louisville, former heavyweight boxer, and at one time or other, I believe he was a champion of one of those alphabet groups that control that particular sport. 11.54 to go, second half. 58-32, Kentucky dominating Louisville. In years, Denny Crum has directed this Louisville team to the Final Four. Not this year, probably, but he does have a champion, a filly by the name of Lady Five Star. In the center of the track, Lady Five Star gains ground. They're nearing the wire. On the outside, Lady Five Star gets the lead. Just like Denny's basketball team, a good closer. And Lady Five Star paid $20.80 last Tuesday night at Latonio. The filly is named after his wife because the assistant coaches thought she too was a five star when they first encountered her. So Lady Five Star. He's going to honor of Joyce Crum. He's going to be looking for some five star outside shooters in this year's recruiting class. Already has one outstanding uh, player coming from Texas, the Bradford well, here's Smith. Payne, but he steps inside, has it knocked away. Blackman coming through. This baby is over, and now it becomes some real bragging rights for the state of Kentucky. Eddie Sutton on one knee, his team playing a super game. I have to believe that Denny Crum is saying to himself, there will be other days in this rivalry. Payne, three-pointer. Payne That's had his their first. He had his feet well set. I've wa he's one of the best pure shooters in college basketball, but he gets some lazy habits in his shooting style. I watched him yesterday in practice. Your feet are what's going to be uh, the start of a great shot. We'll see one of those players next week in Steve Alford. He really has great foot movement for this jump shot. Miller was being contested, so he sent it to Blackman. Coming through is Thomas. Holly with control for the Cardinals. They have been outscored 22 to 7 this half, and Payne bangs another three-pointer, missing. Crook couldn't tap it in. Well, Madison with a man's rebound. And there was a case where Payne wasn't set with his feet. Off-balance jumper. We'll probably see Thomas coming out this time. He had a premeditated move to the basket. And he suddenly wants these guards to have control of this game. Thomas on the right side. It's Blackman. Blackman sends it to Thomas with a slick pass and a nice baseline move. Thomas was the leading player in the state of Florida, so we're not talking about some rookie coming off the bench that it didn't have good credentials. Kentucky does not recruit bad players. Here's Spencer, the seven-foot freshman. Ooh, nice shot. And a chance for a three-pointer. Felton Spencer is really trimmed up. It's a matter of time till he gets in enough minutes to become an important part of this Louisville ball club. He must have lost about 30 pounds because that night that we watched Chapman play as a high school senior, we also watched seven-foot Felton Spencer. Well, he has good work habits. He's a very uh, smart young man. 
And obviously very upset. You know, these kids live in Louisville. <laughs> Both of these teams made up of Kentucky players, so they have to face this 365 days a year. And there's Madison again. He's just shedding the blockers, isn't he? When you look at Madison and that body he plays with, you can project him as about an eighth or a ninth round draft choice by some NFL team that wants to try a basketball player in that secondary, and he was a great all-around high school athlete. He's capable of playing anything. I thought for a second that Kentucky had six men on the floor. Madison was walking off. He didn't realize that he was not being substituted. That's Madison, number 42. This game has been all Kentucky because Louisville had to play Kentucky's game. They never did get their inside game going and, and overpower Kentucky. Remember the confusion that we thought Kentucky was encountering in the first hectic seconds yeah. of this game? Sutton running players in and out. Next. Coming up at CBS Sports will be tomorrow, the year in review at 2 Eastern time. And that will precede the NFC wildcard game. Chris West in the game now. He's probably the best defensive guard that... Uh, Denny Crum has. You can see Denny is just reaching here. He says he uses December to get ready for the rest of the year to find out where his mistakes are. But he is going to have a very difficult time correcting him for this ball club. Davender is a good rebounding guard for his size, isn't it, though? Excellent. So is Blackman. Spencer yanking one away for the Cardinals. They have 847 to see what they can do about this embarrassing deficit. 62-37. You notice Payne, did, again, he just doesn't get his feet set for the jumper. Offensive rebound by McSwain. McSwain has had good games against Kentucky, but today he just hadn't been in there very much. Again, the matchup's extremely difficult here. Kimbrough on Chapman, Payne down there on Blackman, just don't match up well at all. Now they've got Felton Spencer trying to guard Chapman. Chapman missing the three-pointer, and Madison has it come right into his hands. Well, they have him spread out so far, Brent. There's just no rebounding technique at all for Louisville. And you can see that Louisville hasn't worked much with the three-point play, so it puts him at a big disadvantage. Spencer. That's their game. Come to the free-throw line. Denny Crum took Purvis Ellison out with, what, about 12 minutes to go, and he has no intention, it doesn't look like, of putting him back in here. For Louisville in this game, it takes two shots to get three points, with Ellison watching for the bench. His substitute needs the field goal underneath, and then he has to convert the free throw. Well, Brent, it's kind of like your football sport that you've been following so well here of late. If you don't have a passing attack and you get behind, it's very difficult. So now the three-point play becomes the passing attack of basketball. And we'll return to Freedom Hall after this message and a word from your local stations. This is Teams, and if I'm Louisville, I still want one of the Kentucky guards. Have you worked one out? Well, I know you're not going to give me Rex Chapman, okay? So I'm going to go with Felton Spencer and Kimbrough, and I'm going to want Davender. You're going to want Davender, That's right? right. I need somebody back there to run this ball club. I think I better check with Ed. I'm not sure he wants to leave this team right and, now, the way you, they're playing. You know, it's hard to believe, and, and because most of us, and myself included, had Louisville ranked in the top two or three in the country before the season started. It's hard to believe that this guard spot would take away such chemistry for him. But they have to go to Wyoming, to Purdue, to Syracuse, to C UCLA. There's another good shot. There's my one of my trade bait men going on me. But they also have Kansas and NC State to play. Is there a chance they might not be in a position to make the tournament this year? Tough situation for them. Seven and a half minutes to go. Kentucky in blue, leading 64-43. They have hit 10 of 15 from the three-point range. Louisville is only one of four on another one. 11 of 16. 11 of 16 is Chapman. Runs his total to 26, and I don't think Denny Crum likes the three-point play any better now than he did before this game started. Now, the big difference there, Chapman squaring up to the basket for his jump shot. Payne all twisted with his feet on his. The difference between being able to hit it and not hit it. 
line. It'll stay down at this end for Louisville. And Locke crashed to the floor underneath the basket. And he was injured on that play. And Kentucky is shorthanded as it is. And the bench now realizes that Locke is down. Eddie Sutton had to go to the bench. This year, he had to go ahead and enlist his coaches and had to go to the NCAA to get permission to do that so that he had enough people to fill out his squad to have a 10-man practice. See if we can see it, because, Billy, I did not catch it live. Lower left, we are told. He reaches out. Just dives for the ball. Good effort on Locke's part. For Eddie Sutton, he's down there. It looks like he came down right on his knee. Junior center when you look at that roster that's depleted as far as the troops are concerned Louisville of course trying to dig uphill in this game it's 67 43 but for Denny Crum has help on the way we talked about the great recruiting by Eddie Sutton Denny Crum as a young man coming from Bay City Texas his name is Bradford Smith and boy are they going to need him out of the backcourt and he's saying Rex Chapman hold on because here I come and I'll duel you as Smith will be coming to Louisville next year. And of course, the only question is what he will score on his SATs. I checked with the school yesterday, and they said that he is receiving some tutoring assistance in that particular area right now, and that he hopes to score over 700 and be eligible to play as a freshman. I'm told he's talented enough, and his grades are good, and the only remaining question is what he'll score on the SATs. High jump 6'10 as a freshman in high school. That's three fouls on Madison you know we, we talked about Winston Bennett not being uh, able to play this year for Kentucky he's out but also Cedric Jenkins who was out with a stress fracture but he'll be coming back this year As a matter of fact he's on the bench now but not ready to play so Eddie Sutton doing a, a marvelous coaching job taking the depleted ranks and creating a style that makes them very effective Madison with another rebound Madison had a big game against Boston University picking up right where he left off at 15 rebounds in that game Thomas gets it into the hands of Madison they mentioned the SEC the team playing very well down there is University of Florida eight and one at the present time only lost to Florida State a Metro team which is also playing very well look how the Kentucky team bringing the clock down as they were instructed by coach Sutton enjoying this huge lead in the second half and now Sutton will just bring it on down. And with seven seconds to go, Davender missing the shot. Spencer out with a strong rebound for the Cardinals. What helps Kentucky on that play? There's another good steal by Chapman. Great hit ahead. And Davender waits for the trailing man to draw the personal foul on Chris West. What really helps them, Brent? We'll see this steal right here by Chapman. I want you to watch this pass. He lays it out perfectly. Little reverse spin, so the ball comes right back up to Blackman. Uh, to Davender, rather. Excellent play. Davender also a, a good guy at taking the ball to the hoop because he can jump. Had 52 in one high school ball game. Ed Davender at the line. He is 4 of 11 from the field. Blackman is 4 of 6, and Chapman 10 of 18. The Wildcats' only shooting problem is at the free throw line. And for Eddie Sutton, they got the roll on that one. For the game, they are three of eight. Brent, I was mentioning as they spread it out and let the clock roll down, what's so difficult to guard there is that they have three guys that are capable of taking a ball one-on-one -on -one against you, Davender, Blackman, and Chapman. So they can take the weakest matchup, put him at the top of the key, and he gets very difficult to defense. So the changing face of college basketball with the three-point play. Inside to Spencer. Spencer's having a good latter portion of this game. He may be in there before this season's over with Purvis Ellison to allow Ellison to move outside a little bit. Start making some passes. Jerry Jones said yesterday the play that Louisville wants to work on this year is Ellison passing to Ellison. That'll never be, obviously, but they've got to get him in a position to be a little bit more of a threat offensively without Billy Thompson around. He goes to the bench two of eight here this afternoon with four points. That's the young man who scored 25 on a Monday night against Duke when Louisville won its national championship. So you take away that leadership that they had, and it's an entirely different team. There you've got 
If Davinder would have taken his time, because of the switching by Louisville, you'd have had Spencer guarding Chapman, which would have been a real mismatch that Eddie Sutton was looking for. 5.09 remaining here in Freedom Hall. Kentucky always plays another home game here at Freedom Hall. In fact, their next game this season will be right here against Georgia coming up. And you know what's incredible is the practice, the free practice day that they have before that. They'll draw anywhere from 10 to 14,000 people to come in here and watch them to practice. Let's find out about Locke's injury. Let's go to James Brown. James? All right, Brent, as you and Billy saw, Robert Locke in trying to save that last pass out of bounds, hit his knee on the corner of the floorboard here. I did check with him at the bench. It is sore, but he says he will play. Brent? All right, thank you, James. Not sure that Eddie doesn't want to look at a couple of the youngsters here the rest of the way. Payne fires a three-pointer up over a defender. And oh, what a has one knocked away. Thomas, Thomas came up on him. That was almost impossible to block that shot in that position because Felton Spencer had the inside spot. All he wanted to do is go up with a power move. Great leap by Thomas. West jump past to McSwain. And he was fouled by Thomas. That particular play is a play you're going to see a lot of, and that's going up for the jump shot and dumping back down inside, particularly with a three-point play. And tomorrow, it's the Rams and the Redskins. We'll start our coverage from RFK with the NFL today at 3.30 Eastern time. Irv Cross will be standing by at RFK along with Will McDonough, and we'll have Giant coach Bill Parcells in the studio to take a look at who the Giants might be playing. Off the missed free throw, and bang back in by Payne. No block out on the free throw, but I, Kentucky at this point seems to kind of be winding down a little bit. They deserve it so. They, they've played quite a ball game. There wasn't the intensity on that last block out. West doing a pretty good job staying with Chapman. He's the best defender in the backcourt. Chapman, remember, went into the land of Bob Knight and scored 26. He's doing the same thing here in the land of the national champions. And it'll go over to the Cardinals. Working down the baseline was Blackman. That's a pretty good job by McSwain defensively. Ellison will return. What's tough here, Brent, he, he's had that bad ankle, and to sit down that long and come back into the ball game, they have a hard time getting it moving again. He doesn't show much emotion. He re-injured the ankle in practice a couple of days ago, and there was some doubt yesterday as to whether or not Ellison would be able to play in the game. Denny Crum said after yesterday's practice that he was only 50%. He tried it here this afternoon, and he wound up 2 of 8, but... There were a lot of other factors besides an injured ankle. This was some Kentucky game plan here this afternoon. Madison controls the rebound. Felton Spencer did a good job keeping that alive. Ellison should have been on the other side of the lane. Boy, Madison is hammered away at the glass at both ends here this afternoon. 70-47. What we're going to see is Chapman's going to try to take West back door. West doing a good job overplaying him, and since he's uh, been put into the ball game, Chapman's had a hard time getting a one-on-one -on -one move. Locke checks in, and Cedric Jenkins. <laughs> Jenkins was only in there out. for 30 seconds. It's 70 to 47, four minutes, and Thomas comes back in. Louisville's never been able to get into their game plan at all today. With the exception of about the first 30 seconds. Chapman leaning in and stuffed back in by Thomas coming down. You know, if you're Denny Crum, you might want to throw this film away because there's so many things that his ball club has had a hard time doing today, and blocking out is certainly one of them. Spencer missing the stuff after yanking away the rebound, but Denny wants to take a look at Ellison and Spencer together. The foul is on West in the backcourt. You think about this particular series, they would not play each other during the regular season since back, I think, in the 20s. They met a couple of times in the 50s in the NCAA tournament. Then in 83, they resumed their particular warfare. And in overtime, a game that you covered in the tournament, Billy, Denny Crum's Cardinals blew away the Wildcats, 80 to 68. 
But then the rest of the way, Kentucky won 65-44, then 72-67, and in 84, Louisville came back 71-64. But you and I were down in Lexington last year when Kentucky defeated the Cardinals by five points. In so Eddie Sutton has taken the upper hand on Denny Crump. He really has. This has been the first breakthrough of this regular season on the other guy's home court. That game that we had in the NCAA tournament was in Knoxville, Tennessee. So Eddie Sutton about to post a big W over Louisville. We'll be back. It's the front line. Well, not much comparison in the final analysis of the top of the show, though. I, I really thought that Louisville's inside game may gain advantage early, but it's been all Kentucky today, and you can see that Louisville's front court has really never been in a position to be able to dominate. You gotta have the guards, and I asked Denny Crum yesterday about Billy Thompson, Milt Wagner, and Jeff Hill. Does he miss their leadership or their talent the most? We have good young athletes. They just don't have the same experience, and we don't have the leadership, and when you don't have the experience or the leadership, you make a lot more mistakes, and this team makes a lot more mistakes. It'll take them uh, quite a while, I think, to learn to do things right. Well, Thompson with the Los Angeles Lakers, Wagner in the CBA, and Jeff Hall, graduate assistant, and he's studying toward his degree, and Denny Crump could use any or all of those three bodies here this afternoon. Of course, Kentucky is without some talent from a year ago, too, when you think about Kenny Walker. Locke rejects that shot. Loose ball. Louisville up with it. West. No place to go. It wasn't. And Kentucky comes away with it again. Well, when you think about Kentucky's losses, they're almost as big when you figure Winston Bennett is not playing. You have Wagner and Hart. I mean, uh, Kenny Walker and Hart. So they were really stripped of good talent. Chapman to Davender. Shades of things to come with the Wildcats. <laughs> right off the pass was that behind the back. Jumps the ball inside to Davender. West coming away for Louisville. West has quieted Chapman, though, since he's been on him man-to-man. -man. There's Williams from outside. Again, no rebounding by Louisville. And this is a problem that Kentucky will have all year. They only had about a two-tenths of a percent rebounding edge over their opponents. And their opponents have not been as, as strong as what they'll see the rest of the way. Great pass. Davender. Chapman looked one way and fed right inside. Eddie Sutton will clear the Kentucky bench at the two-minute mark. We come down toward it, and he'll give everybody some playing time. This firing again, and boy, Louisville couldn't do anything right here this afternoon. Oh, that was a goal that tend. Goal yes, I don't think the referee ever saw it. That was a goal tend. Eddie Sutton saw it. He's still up around half court. I'll tell you what that did. That took away Chapman's career high. <laughs> He's got 26 right now. Inside is freshman Avery Marshall out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, scoring that field goal. I don't think Chapman will have to worry about sitting on 26 uh, <laughs> much longer. Either. <laughs> the Kentucky fans are up now, making a little noise. They know they're going to put this one away. Boy, Thomas! Thomas and Madison have out-rebounded Louisville today just as if they owned them. Just tougher inside. So here they come. They'll clear both benches. Eddie Sutton and the Kentucky players congratulating Rex Chapman. The freshman from Owensboro played himself a ball game, didn't he? Louisville really has a lot of work to do. I watched them in Alaska. They dropped three games up there, and I thought it was just a matter of time. But this club right now has got a lot of questions to be answered, and I don't know if they can pull it around as, as this year moves on. Don't want to write them off, obviously, but they really have a chemistry problem. I must say that even though he doesn't like it, I think Denny's going to have to use the three-pointer. I really believe that it's going to dictate which four college teams will wind up in New Orleans. In some fashion, that three-point play is going to be a huge weapon. Either in that buzzer game you wind up with, Billy, in the uh, tournament, that's inevitable for everybody. You get into one of those Donnie Brooks. Well, not only using it offensively, you've got to figure out how to defend against yeah. it and also rebound against it. Now they're taking them now as a catch-up mechanism, and that's the one time it really is going to hurt. There's Felton Spencer going inside. And tomorrow on CBS, the year in review, 2 Eastern time. 
followed by the Rams and the Reds. Billy, who do you like in this game between Los Angeles and Washington? Well, you always tell me to go with the home team, and they had controversy on the team. You always tell me to go with the guy that's stirring it up, so I guess it's got to be the Redskins. I mean, I listen to you when it comes to football. I'll pass that along to the Greek. He was leaning toward the Rams the last I saw. Him. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know your football. I'll leave it up to you. There is a very disappointed club, and you see Tony Kimbrough sitting right there in Purvis, looking like the world has come down their shoulders. Now, that's one of the problems of playing a game like this with so much emotion involved. The losing team have a hard time jumping back. 80 to 51. It has been a sound thrashing by Eddie Sutton and the Wildcats of Kentucky, and all credit goes to that coaching staff over there and the talent that pulled off this plan here this afternoon. It was a good one. I like Miller's ability to handle the ball. Oh, Locke just took the freight train home. That knee didn't bother him on that play. A little frosting. A little frosting. Here's the freight train. Goes right by Felton Spencer. Abrams did the right thing. He went for the ball, not try to draw the charge. I, I got to tell you, I wouldn't miss the next couple of years between these two schools. Well, I, mean, I want to be there when Denny Crump gets an experienced team and, and some guards that will come back out after the Wildcats. That'll be some shootout. Talking about writing Louisville off. Remember last year, of course, Kentucky won this game. Louisville had a pretty good end of the season. And some more of that little quibbling between these two clubs. Kentucky, of course, uh, talks about being the team of the 80s. And they said they finished in the top 10 more times than Louisville. They discounted completely the fact that Louisville won two national championships in the 80s. It never ends between these two. Locke with the personal foul. And, uh, Billy, well, I've got the football commitments next week. You'll be covering college basketball. We've got St. John's, Villanova in the Big East, Indiana, Ohio State, conference warfare getting underway. You will be watching the Indiana, Ohio State game? Yes, I uh, believe so. And we'll see one of the real great three-point shooters there in Steve Offord. A team, uh, Ricky Callaway had a great ball game the other night coming off an injury to really make the difference. Louisville had them. 49-42, nine minutes to go, and all of a sudden Callaway took over, and the three-point play became a big factor in that game. Indiana won going away. Indiana has victories over both of these clubs. Well, with time running down here, I want to pass along a couple of news stories in case you did not get them as Madison dishes the lock. Another field goal for the Wildcats. That would, those were not guards. Those are the two big men taking the break. First in the Gator Bowl earlier this afternoon, Clemson held off Stanford to win it 27-21. And Dick Vermeil announced that he would not become the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. He would say with CBS television as a football analyst. Abram missing, and here the Kentucky Wildcats have won bragging rights. I should say and more. them. And, and more. Boy, this was a big one. And it was a sound thrashing. And now, a nice thing. The Cardinals of Louisville are coming out to shake hands with the Kentucky players. And oh, how you like to see this. Touch of class. It's a bit of rivalry, but the players are out there shaking hands. Eddie Sutton and the Wildcats have won it 85 to 51. since he became the co-chair. NCAA basketball has been a presentation of CBS Sports. We'll see you tomorrow with the NFL.